It's um, May 21st, 2022. And I'm going to call this one probably a Darcy's Archive because I'm feeling really sad. I don't know why I keep recording these. And I guess there's just me whining to the world. Me sharing this shit. It's just, it's all buried inside and. I always had this belief when I was a little kid that if people really understood. How sad they were making me. How horrible they were making my life. That they wouldn't do it anymore. And as I've gotten older, I've gotten much more cynical. After I watched the Amanda Todd thing happen, and then I watched all these people pour on social media after she died, cheering the fact that she committed suicide because they'd made her so sad. Sometimes I do lose faith in humanity a little bit. I know everybody isn't like that, but enough people are. They're happy knowing they've made you miserable enough that you're going to end your life because it's just too painful to keep going. That's why Amanda Todd died. She was shamed to death. <clears throat> that, um, that broke me at the time. I do try to pause this every time I have to blow my nose. That's horrible to upload. If I do upload it and I can't I don't know how to edit that stuff out. Because if I cut out the stuff in the middle then. What I say after doesn't happen anyway. Yeah, that broke me when Amanda Todd died. From shame. Because she was bullied to death. Well, I'm crying now. I just finished watching the, the newest Ghostbuster movie. This is my second time watching it. The first time I watched it, it's just before Christmas, and my workplace brought me into the office and told me what an awful, horrible person I was, and how I was just a pedophile, basically, because I had shown a picture to a co-worker. Well, the co-worker was 16. The picture was of a person sitting in a chair. There was nothing sexual or inappropriate about that picture. It was... The picture you're looking at right now, a very similar picture. To them, this is pornography. If I share a picture like this with anybody at work, I will be sent home because I'll be considered a sex offender. And that day they sent me home because I was a sex offender. I was being called out in a Me Too moment. Didn't I understand? That any time I told anybody I had any contact with another human being, that meant I was a sexual pervert. I went home. I deleted any picture of anybody I had on my phone. I erased any accounts I had anywhere where I was trying to meet people, because I was trying to meet people at the time. And I just... Resigned myself to the fact that no matter what I did, because it was me doing it, I was always going to be a pervert. I was always going to be a sex offender. And I was trying to think of the most pain free way to end my life. I think that was December 8th. And I was feeling kind of bad because I didn't want to ruin everybody's Christmas.
I didn't want to ruin my daughter's Christmas. Because it's not her fault that her father is this degenerate thing that I am. And... My spouse, seeing the, the mental state that I was in, and uh, <laughs> she didn't want to leave me alone, and she wanted to get me out of my head, and so she said, let's go to a movie, and Ghostbusters Afterlife was the one that was playing at the time, so we went and saw that. <clears throat> As I'm watching the scene towards the end where uh, the Harold Ramis character is with his granddaughter, I just thought, how appropriate is this that I'm watching a movie about a ghost? I'm thinking, what can we want? So when I just watched that movie again, it all came back. We, and I'm speaking in general terms, but let's check around. As trans people who have been shamed who have been told our existence is dirty and wrong and perverted and we hate ourselves. We hate what we represent. We hate the fact that no matter what we do, we will always be seen as demons, as monsters. So when you um, send us stupid things, telling us to detransition or it's not real or don't we understand what's wrong with this, <laughs> you need to understand that you don't know what the mindset is of the person who receives it at the time. And yours could be the thing that prompts them to end their suffering. You know what? You could send encouraging things. Reminders that you love them. Reminders that they're just people. And that could be the message. That could be the thing that makes the difference. Between them deciding to end it that day. And them deciding, you know what? It's worth being here. I'm worth loving. And eventually, I'll find somebody or several somebodies who feels that way too. This dysphoria thing is not a joke. And for you to pile shame on top of that, Just don't do it. So many of us are trying so hard just to hang on. The idea that I might have a friend or that a person might be willing to go for coffee with me should not be cause for concern or that there's some sort of perversion going on. People in the past, I've gone for coffee with people. I've shared pictures like this with people and it was never an issue. Now, suddenly, if I talk to anybody about anything in my life, I have to worry that I'm gonna get pulled aside and told that I'm a pervert who's trying to groom children. that disgusts me 
that angers me. And it makes it very hard for me to maintain hope that one day my life will improve. Anyway, this is not an upbeat Darcy's Corner. I'm tired of being sad all the time. Anyway, Darcy's Corner. Peace.